You might have a spot like this, where the sun bakes the earth and it seems like nothing can grow. I had a strip like this along my driveway, but now it looks like this, because I decided to embrace the heat with prairie plants. As it turns out, many of our North American prairie plants can not only survive these harsh conditions, but can actually thrive in hot, dry suns. The Great American Prairie once spanned nearly a third of the continental U.S. Illinois, the prairie state, was covered in 22 million acres of prairie. Let's take a look to see how our beautiful prairies are doing. Wait, that can't be right. Is that right? It's not your eyes. In Illinois, only about 0.01% of that original prairie remains. That's one ten thousandth, which comes to less than 2,400 acres. Well, that's depressing. And the loss continues. Just this past March, after a brief but spirited fight to save her, the Bell Bowl Prairie was bulldozed to pave a new airport shipping road. I was surprised to learn that our North American tallgrass prairies are among the most endangered ecosystems in the world, with less than 4% remaining. I thought this show was supposed to be, like, uplifting. So it's more important now than ever for us to start bringing these prairie plants into our landscapes. And you don't need a ton of space. Our little micro prairie here is about 16 feet long and just a couple of feet deep. It gets an early start with foliage in the spring and is really pretty thick and full by the beginning of May. Awesome for weed suppression. And it starts blooming in mid-May with Baptisia. Baptisia is also called false indigo and it has the most gorgeous blue-green leaves. And it has roots that go about seven feet deep. We'll use me as a measuring stick. How's that? Perfect. I'm a tall 5'6", so these roots are as deep as 1.27 amandas. For comparison, most turf grasses have roots only about 4 to 8 inches deep. So, that explains a few things. It's the deep roots that keep these prairie plants thriving, even during hot, dry periods. Pale purple coneflower is next to bloom, starting in early June and going through to July. Echinacea is a prairie classic, with roots that go about 5 foot deep and tap roots that can go as deep as 8 feet. That's almost 1.5 amandas. I've been seeing what I thought was cup plant growing along a few of the smaller local highways, but I couldn't tell for sure using my drive-by botany skills. Then one day I was driving with my toddler in the back when he dropped his red Chevelle wagon on the floor of the car where he couldn't reach it. He didn't take that well. I pulled over to retrieve the lost car when lo and behold, I discovered we'd stopped next to a ditch filled with this unidentified plant. I got a picture and was able to identify it. Sadly, it's not cup plant, but a nasty invasive species called cutleaf teasel. It's most prevalent in the Midwest and Northeast and is invading our prairies. It's now a dominant species in some areas, including the last remaining tall grass prairies in Illinois. Not this again. So especially if you're in the Midwest and see this weed growing, murder at will. Butterfly weed blooms next with vibrant orange starting in mid-June and going on through to August. It's got a nice compact structure and stays under about two feet tall. But this little milkweed has roots that go as deep as 12 feet. Forget Amanda, that's as tall as an African elephant. No, 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 no. Because prairie plants have most of their biomass under the ground and are constantly growing new roots, they're extremely efficient not only at finding water, but also at storing carbon in the soil. In many cases, they're even better than trees and forests. Anise hyssop is an all-around awesome plant. This one starts blooming just after the butterfly weed in mid-June, and the flowers open in intervals going all the way through to September. So this one gives a nice long nectar supply for bees, hummingbirds, and butterflies. The goldfinches love, love, love the seeds from anise hyssop, and the stems are sturdy and strong enough to support them when they perch. Sorry for the film quality, I'm filming through my kitchen windows and the double panes makes this weird effect. I had two pairs of goldfinches that came every morning last year and would sit up in the stems snacking. We can see this garden from our kitchen windows, so it was really lovely having breakfast with the finches every day. For anise hyssop, the straight species can be a bit tall, but there are some smaller cultivars if your space is limited. Do yourself and your pollinators a favor and plant you some mountain mint. I have two varieties and they attract an incredible diversity of insects. Slender mountain mint blooms from mid-June to September, and clustered mountain mint blooms late June, early July, and on into September as well. The mountain mints attract so, so many different kinds of bees, wasps, small butterflies, and even flies and beetles. If you want to support a diverse array of pollinators, you'll be hard-pressed to find a better plant. 
and they're awesome in a garden setting. They have a long bloom time and their foliage is stunning even when they're not in bloom. And in case planting a mint is scaring you, I really haven't seen these spread. Definitely not in the way traditional mint spreads by rhizomes. So don't let the name scare you. But if, if we get too close to them right here, mm -hmm. they will sort of fly. They do sometimes. Sometimes they get a little scared of us because we're big. We're big and we're hairy. Okay, so you might have noticed I haven't mentioned prairie grasses yet. Tall grass prairies are generally dominated by the four horsemen of the prairie. Big blue stem, switchgrass, Indian grass, and little blue stem. These all get pretty tall, and so they're perfect for hiding an ugly view. I actually do have some little blue stem repeating throughout this little garden, but it's gotten totally covered up by the flowering forbs. I've got some little blue stem in a separate garden nearby in full sun, and it's thriving in a really easy, happy plant. I definitely recommend it. I have plans to try to move the grasses that are in this driveway garden to their own dedicated space. These warm season grasses get a little bit of a later start than the flowering forbs, so they're definitely not getting enough sunlight tucked behind the flowers, and they deserve to live their best life. The Canadian forest fires are still burning and are expected to continue until after the summer ends. I know, I know, just stick with me. Here in Maryland, we've had quite a few days where we can't even take the kids outside because of the air quality. But ironically, using periodic controlled low temperature fires is one of the best fire prevention strategies. And historically, fire has been used to manage prairies for centuries. These carefully controlled burns remove fuel in the form of dried leaves and grasses that would otherwise be allowed to accumulate. So these controlled fires reduce the risk of uncontrolled and very hot fires that can cause so much destruction. Now please don't go running outside and starting fires, you crazy kids. I'm talking about experienced and licensed professionals doing very carefully planned and controlled burns as a part of a broader ecosystem management plan. I've been learning about this by watching Kyle from Native Habitat Project. He is just one such licensed professional and is doing some really exciting conservation and restoration work with endangered prairies down south. And I'm just doing my best to paraphrase what I've learned listening to him. So definitely check out his channel to hear it from the real deal. I'll link his page in the description. I've always loved gardening, but I'm learning as I go how to best integrate my garden back into our local ecosystems. If you're a nerd like me, or if you just like looking at pretty plants and fuzzy bees, consider subscribing to join me as I learn. Our North American prairies can support so much life and diversity, but they're truly in need of our help. Check to see what kind of prairie habitat used to be in your region, and I hope you'll consider adding a micro prairie to your little slice of heaven. And consider visiting some of our last remaining prairie remnants, or donating to support their conservation and management. Check for links in the description. Prairie plants can be hard to find, so to see the website I use to order the plants for this garden, watch this video next. Thanks so much for watching.